Welcome to Martin Luther Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Hans. I'm glad you're here. We are here gathered to worship today. Now we invite you to gather around. We invite you to get ready, prepare your hearts, get comfortable. Maybe get a cup of coffee or hot cocoa or tea. Enjoy yourself on the couch. Maybe get your dog or cat up by you and get ready because we're going to experience God today. Let us worship. Let us turn our hearts now to confession. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives all our sins. As he called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share that peace with people either in your midst or on your computer screen. Let us pray. O God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Boys and pastors back, yeah, it was in pastors back. Boys and pastors back, yeah, it was in pastors back. I don't know what to do, boys and pastors back. Bum bum. Hi, I'm Pastor Hans. I'm co Pastor Russ. And I'm Pastor Ryan. Hello, look at that. So we are here. Do you have a feel for what's in the pastor's bag? Mmm. Mm. Whatever it is, it's small. Okay, yeah, it's a bomb. Okay. It's a bomb? No, it's not a bomb. What do you think it is? I don't know what it 
Mm-hmm. Ooh. Who is this? Or what is this? Um, a guy holding a sword. Yes. And what's it from? Do you know? Or what, what is he? Hmm. Um, he, he's a Funko Pop. But... He's a Funko figure. That's right. This is from the movie Gladiator. He's a Roman soldier with the Gladius. The Roman soldier. And what do Roman soldiers do? They invade. Invade. They That's fight. Right. They fight. That's right. And so in our little thing today, in our children's sermon bulletin today, we hear about the Roman soldiers who were at the tomb of Jesus. And the earthquake came and the sun was eclipsed during the eclipse and it got dark. And then the Roman soldier said, surely this must have been the son of God. Because even the Roman soldier, they weren't Christians or Jewish. Even the Roman soldier, he's a pagan. He knew, whoa, this guy was something special. And so he even acknowledged who Jesus was. So if the Roman soldier who fights and invade can do that, can we acknowledge Jesus too? No. <laughs> that wasn't what I wanted to hear you say yes. <laughs> okay, let's pray. Ready? Dear God, Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for thank today. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your son. We acknowledge Jesus. We acknowledge Jesus. As your son. As your son. Our Savior. Our Savior. The Son of God. The Son of God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. 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 Our first reading today is from Numbers 22, 1 through 8. The Israelites set out and camped in the plains of Moab across the Jordan from Jericho. Now Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Moab was in great dread of the people, because they were so numerous. Moab was overcome with fear of the people of Israel. And Moab said to the elders of Midian, This horde will now lick up all that is around us, as an ox licks up the grass of the field. Now Balak, son of Zippor, was king of Moab at that time. He sent messengers to Balaam, son of Beor at Pethor, which is on the Euphrates, in the land of Amah, to summon him, saying, A people has come out of Egypt. They have spread over the face of the earth, and they have settled next to me. Come now, curse this people for me, since they are stronger than I. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them from the land. For I know that whomever you bless is blessed, and whomever you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the fees for divination in their hand. And they came to Balaam and gave him Balak's message. He said to them, Stay here tonight, and I will bring back word to you just as the Lord speaks to me. So the officials of Moab stayed with Balaam. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is from Numbers 23, 19 through 24. The Lord is not a human being, that God should lie, or a mortal that changes plans. He has the Almighty promised, and will God not do it? Has the Lord spoken, and will God not fulfill it? See, I received a command to bless. God is blessed, and I cannot revoke it. The Lord has not beheld misfortune in Jacob, nor has God seen trouble in Israel. The Lord their God is with them, acclaimed as a king among them. God, who brings them out of Egypt, is like the horns of a wild ox for them. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. Now it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, See what God has done. Look, a people rising up like a lioness and rousing itself like a lion. It does not lie down until it has eaten the prey and drunk the blood of the slain. The second reading for today is from Numbers 24. 10 through 13. Then Balak's anger was kindled with Balaam, and he struck his hands together. Balak said to Balaam, I summoned you to curse my enemies, 
but instead you have blessed them these three times. Now be off with you. Go home, I said. I will reward you richly, but the Lord has denied you any reward. And Balaam said to Balak, Did I not tell your messengers whom you sent to me? If Balak should give me his house full of silver and gold, I would not be able to go beyond the word of the Lord, to do either good or bad of my own will. What the Lord says, that is what I will say. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, There will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grown empty and weary with evil, 
Is this good news or bad news? Sometimes we're not really sure. When something happens, when we hear a story, or we get a big announcement at work, or a family member announced something, we're not really sure. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Is this good news or bad news? Growing up, my brother and I would come home from school, and we'd be telling our parents a story about our day, maybe around the dinner table, and we'd be talking about it. And usually near the middle, sometimes my parents would say, are you bragging about this or complaining? Are you bragging about getting in trouble or are you complaining about getting in trouble? Is this good news or bad news? Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we're not really sure. We have to wait and find out what's going to happen. This can be describing the Hebrews in the wilderness. Is this good news or bad news? They're in the wilderness for 40 years, one around. They were stuck because they weren't faithful. They didn't trust in God enough to get them into the promised land on God's power alone. And so they're in this. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I probably think it was a bad thing because they had to wait and kind of suffer and they couldn't grow crops. They couldn't enjoy, you know, the animals of their herd like they could. They couldn't enjoy the fruits of their labor like they fully could if they were in the promised land. But it's also a good thing, though, because they got to truly see God's power and fullness before they went into the promised land. It's kind of both good news and bad news. Now, the question might be, for the other people around there, is it good news or bad news that the Hebrews were coming to town? Now, you're talking about a large group estimates of this group. Given what we hear in the books of Numbers and Deuteronomy and Exodus, is it could be three million, two to three million people of the Hebrews were coming into the Promised Land. It was a huge amount, huge quantity. So is that good news or bad news? Now, if you're one of the inhabitants of the Canaanites, one of the people of Canaan, the Canaanites, it's bad news because they're going to push you out. They will kill you. They will destroy your town, your cities. We hear about that later in the book of Joshua. That's the conquest. They destroy everything before them. But some of the neighboring countries like Moab, Edom, is this good news or bad news? What's interesting is the book of Numbers tells us when the people come, when the Hebrews were in the promised land, they offer to pay water. They paid for the use of walking on the roads. They went to the king of Ed Edom and they said, hey, we're kind of distant cousins. We're kind of related. We're both Semitic tribes. Let us just pass through your country, just on the border, just walk along the highway and we'll pay you for it like a toll. And we'll pay like utility for water. We'll pay you to let us use the water from your wells. We won't take everything. We won't bother anyone. We won't destroy anything. We're just going to pass along. And the Edomites were like, you're giving us money? Okay, sure, because you're a lot bigger and stronger than us, so we don't want to bother with you. But then they get to Moab, and they say the same thing to the king. Can we pay you to walk along the highway and just get some water? And the king said, no, I will not allow that to happen. Is this good news or bad news? Well, this conflict, they weren't really sure. It leads to a conflict. It leads to a war. And before the war really gets started, we have an interesting story from today. It's the first reading, the psalm, and the second reading are all about this particular moment. Now, it is true, the psalm is not really a psalm, it's a prophetic word. And the first reading and second reading are on either side of it. So we have about three chapters here in Numbers that I'm going to touch upon today that we're talking about. And this is a very interesting story. It has a lot of material in the book of Numbers because it has a very special place. The authors and numbers, they really wanted to remind the people, the Hebrews, this is what happened. This is what was important. 
between this chapter and this chapter, these chapters here are really significant. So let's remember them. What this is, is the story of Balaam. Balaam was a prophet for hire. That sounds kind of weird to say, but yes, a prophet for hire. Not like prophets, what you get by making money, but a prophet of the person of God, the seer of God. And Balaam is there in a kind of a far off town. And so this Moabite king, Balak, decides to hire him. So Balak hires Balaam. I know the names. You got to stay with me a little bit here. So this is the Moabite king who said, no, you can't come to my land. You cannot, even though you'll pay me, you won't let me in. So he tells the Hebrews no. And so he goes, he knows this is not going to be good. And so Balak goes to hire Balaam to speak a word, a prophetic word, a curse. Balak wants Balaam to curse the Hebrews, to curse the people of God, so that the, his nation, the Moabites, would get an advantage and would win in victory over the Hebrews. This is a very specific thing. And this is actually not that rare in the ancient world. In the Greek world, they would go to Delphi or various oracles to get a prophetic word, and they would pay the oracle for this duty or this service. Throughout the ancient Near East, there were other prophets for hire, and the people would go and pay for a prophetic word. The king would pay for this so that they would have a good word, something good on their side, some good juju, some good magic on their end for a battle. So, in the first reading, that's what happens. We hear of the princes and the aristocrats from Moab going to Balaam, and telling him what the king has said and offering him money. And Blum says, okay, just wait here. We'll go tomorrow. You will hire me. That sounds good. And then in the middle of the night, Blum has a dream and he talks to God. And God says, you can go, but you can only say what I tell you to say. And Blum's like, good, that's kind of what I do. That's my deal. So great. Okay, God, well, let's go for it. What's interesting is Blum's actually speaking to the Hebrew God, Yahweh. We think about these prophets were higher, these pagan kings, all this about pagan gods, but this is actually Balaam talking to Yahweh, the Hebrew God, which should be an indication, right? A little foreshadowing. Well, the Hebrew God probably won't let Balaam curse the Hebrew people because that is God's people. And that's exactly what happens. So Balaam gets up, goes with them, and we hear in the psalm. So Balaam actually gives three different prophetic words, three different passages. And this is from the seconds we heard in the psalm today. Balaam gets up and he blesses them. He blesses the Hebrew people. And Balak is standing there going, what? What did you just do? No, you blessed my enemies. You were supposed to curse them, put a hex on them, give them some bad juju. Instead, Balaam blesses them. And Balaam tells him every time, I can't say anything unless God gives me the words. Now, I do want to say a quick interjection here. On his way to meet Balak, Balaam is riding on his donkey, his favorite donkey, and the donkey does weird things, like he brushes up against a wall, he hurts him, and then he goes in the middle of a field and lays down, and Balak is whipping his donkey, and beating him, and smacking him, and his donkey talks to him. Yes, I love the story, it has a talking donkey, just like Shrek, and the donkey says, why are you beating me? I'm your favorite donkey. And he says, first of all, Balaam doesn't say, what, a talking donkey? No, he says, talks to the donkey as if it's normal. He says, Get up, go back. I need to go meet this Balakai to give a prophetic word. I got hired, I got a job to do, let's get moving, buddy. And so the donkey's like, fine. So he gets up and he gets back on the road and the donkey just lays down in the middle of the road. And again, Balak just starts whipping the donkey, beating him, smacking him. And the donkey's like, stop it, dude. Can't you see? And Balam goes, I can't see anything. What are you talking about? And then in the middle of the road, an invisible angel appears, visible, with a sword drawn right in his face, ready to strike him. And Blom's like, oh my gosh, donkey, you're so great. You saw an invisible angel and I couldn't. You saved my life. You're fantastic, donkey. Okay, we're going anyways. <laughs> so they go and they finally meet Balak. And when he's with Balak, again, Balaam cannot say a curse. Balaam cannot curse the people of God. And then the interchange we hear in the third read today. Balak says, why did I pay you this money? Why did we go through all this trouble? I paid you a lot of money, but now forget it, buddy. I'm not paying you a dang cent, not a penny, not a shekel, not a denarius, nothing, because you did not do what I told you to do. And Balaam says, I did exactly what I told you I do. I can only speak as God tells me to. 
As God can bless, I can bless. As God can curse, I can curse. And that's the end of the story. So three different times, Balaam blesses the Hebrews. And again, three is an important number. This is not insignificant. The enemy king pays a foreign prophet to bless the people, to curse the people, but instead the foreign prophet blesses them three times. Now, the original audience would know this is, well, of course God's with us. God's on our side. We are God's chosen people. Of course it's going to happen. But when you come across the story the first time through, you think, what a weird story. It takes up like three whole chapters in the book of Numbers. It has a talking donkey, invisible angels. It has a bad contract. It has everything you would like for a children's party. Maybe, maybe not. And in this, in this incredible story, it shows that God will bless the people. God will bless the Hebrews. Even foreign, possibly pagan prophets will hear from God and speak a blessing upon God's people. This is significant. This is important because in the ancient world, a spoken word had significance. The Genesis story, the creation story, it starts with God's word, God's breath. The word of God creates. Again, not surprised, Jesus is the word of God. The spoken word had power in the ancient world, far more so than we have today. Because when you made a promise, you couldn't go back on it. Sadly, in our culture, people go back on their promises all the time. Just the other day, my son made a comment that one of his classmates broke a pinky promise. Yeah. And I'm like, well, can you trust that student anymore? And Wes's like, nope, can't trust him. I'm like, yeah, that's a sad but real lesson. People break promises. In the ancient world, you kept your promise because if you were to make a promise or a covenant or a curse or a blessing, you had to fulfill it. You couldn't go back on it. There's lots of stories in the Old Testament about people doing, making great things, doing wonderful things, and then making a vow or promise to God, and they have to keep it at great sacrifice, at great personal price, because in the ancient world they knew if you made a promise, if you made a blessing or a curse, you had to fulfill it. Even still today, there's a little tinge of this today where if you say something, you can't take it back, can you? If you tell your mother-in-law that, man, that was a really ugly Christmas sweater she had on, can't take it back, can you? If I tell my son, man, your haircut looks hideous, I can't take that back, can I? No. So we have to be careful when we say things because these words still have power. Now, they may not have as much power as they did in the ancient world, but words are still significant. Words still have power. There may be times in all of our lives where we thought, oof, I wish I could take that back. I wish I could unsay that thing, but I can't. What is said is said. What is done is done. The damage has already happened. Which brings us to the gospel reading. Throughout the gospel, Jesus says some interesting things, some confusing things. Jesus speaks about his death. Jesus predicts that he will be killed and crucified. And thinking about that, is Jesus speaking a curse or a blessing? I guess it depends on how you look at it. Jesus is saying these words, they're very harsh sometimes, they're very strong, they're very radical. People wouldn't talk like this because again, when you say it, it's kind of a promising. When you speak these words, they have power. You're creating a future with what you're saying here. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus talks about the grain of wheat that falls and dies so that others may have a life. Jesus says that he will be lifted up from this earth. Jesus has all these really strong words talking about the judgment of God and if you hate your life, you will have it. Jesus says these things throughout the Gospels. Jesus predicts his death. Jesus predicts. Jesus says this thing about a crucifixion being raised up on the cross. What are the disciples to make of it? Are is their teachers, their rabbi, kind of losing it? Is he going a little crazy? Well, they find out, no, he's not. Is his, are their rabbi, is their teacher, their Messiah, is he saying something that doesn't make sense? Because why would a Messiah have to die? That's weird. That's not what a rabbi, that's not what a Messiah would talk like back then. No Messiah, no anointed one, no son of God would die for others. That makes no sense. People would fight a war for their Messiah, but the Messiah doesn't die for us. It was really baffling. 
The Gospel of Matthew is especially baffling because Philip and Andrew bring a group of Greek-speaking Jews to meet Jesus. And they're introducing Jesus to this Greek Jewish community. And Jesus goes off about the seed must die. If you hate your life, you must give it up. And I can imagine the original disciples looking around going, what? Jesus, these Greek Jews just want to meet you. They want to talk to you. And you're talking about dying? About how the Son of Man must be lifted up from this earth? As you must die like the seed, the grain, so that others can live? Jesus, what are you saying? This is truly bizarre talk. People didn't necessarily talk this way again because the power of the word was powerful. It was so magnificent. When you said something, it gave life to it. When you breathed life with your words, you couldn't take them back. So Jesus was speaking about this. Is this a curse or is it a blessing? Kind of like the Hebrew people, it depends on kind of who you're thinking about. For Jesus, it's a curse. Jesus would go to the cross and suffer and die for us. For us, this word of his death, this harshness, it's a blessing. Martin Luther, in talking about theology, he talked about this as the happy exchange, that Christ freely took upon himself the curse, shame, and sin of the world to exchange for us his righteousness, the birthright of the Son of God, the inheritance we get the inheritance of God because of Christ, because Jesus joyfully gave it to us. This spoken word, it's a blessing and a curse. Jesus will go and die on the cross, suffer for us. But in so doing, we may have life and have it abundantly. Is this good news or bad news? It's both. The death of Jesus was certainly a harsh, bad news for Jesus, but it was his glory, as he said in the Gospel of Day. His glory comes through this, but for us, it is good news. It is the good news that Christ would die and exchange all that for us, that we may live. Amen.
walk with me When I'm in trouble Lord, walk with me When my head is bowed in sorrow Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands. As an offering to you, let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. The Prayers of the People Relying on the promises of God, We pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You wash us through and through, and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence, and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy. 
justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying, and all who grieve. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation, and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
day spring alive that gives us light from on high. Thank you for making time to be here to worship today. We appreciate that. If it's on Sunday morning or any time during the week, we're glad you're making time to worship and connect with God. A few announcements for you today. First, we want to make sure people are aware this Saturday coming up is our Palm Saturday Shindig. We're very excited about it. It's going to start at 11 a.m. They'll be here in the church in the parking lot and in the field here. We'll have an Easter egg hunt for the kids. We'll have stations, a pastor's tea party, a coffee bar. And one thing I'm very excited about, we'll have crafts also, is that we'll be having a food pop-up. So I think it's kind of like a food truck, only without the truck. They're coming here, at least some of the social services, is going to have a food pop-up. And they'll have pork carnitas, which are delicious. They'll have smash burgers, my favorite. And they will also have a new original item just for us. It will be the cilantro lime jalapeno burger. It's a new creation. It's going to be delicious. So all the proceeds will go to Lee Summit Social Services. They're doing a free will offering for the food. Um, and part of it is because we're able to get funding through a Thrivent card. So thank you so much for support through Thrivent. We appreciate that support. And the member who contributed, thank you for that. So that everything will be covered by the Thrivent card. So we're doing all the food is a free will offering. So hopefully you contribute for that. This will be so much fun. Please come on, check it out. It's going to be a great time. We hope you can be here. A lot of fun activities. We hope to see you Saturday. And of course, the next day, next Sunday, is Palm Sunday. So at the wonderful Palm Saturday Shindig, we'll also be having drip pickup bags. So if you will be watching in your home and you like the, the month pickup bag, you get it. they'll have the palm leaf, it'll have stuff for Easter, it will have communion, the news are all that good stuff in it. So we invite you to get that palm bag also, even if you're not gonna stay, we invite you to come by the church Saturday to get that because Palm Sunday is next Sunday. So Palm Sunday, keep saying this over and over again. We'll be having a service inside the sanctuary at 845 and we'll be having this service outside, weather permitting, out on the yard at 10 o'clock. The nice thing about being outside, we can sing, we can gather, bring your lawn chair, it's gonna be great. 
And we'll do the same thing on Easter Sunday, 845 inside the sanctuary for the organ service, 10 a.m. with the band outside in the beautiful weather to sing and enjoy nature. So we hope you all plan to come for service or be here. We also have service here online, wherever you are, however you can watch. You can also enjoy service here, Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday as well. And during Holy Week, we'll also have Monday Thursday and Good Friday services up as well. So stay tuned for information about those services coming up. I know it's a busy time. A lot is going on. It's a wonderful, busy time in the church year. So stay tuned, get connected, and connect with God. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 